On Taiwan, I reiterated the longstanding U.S. One China policy. Uh, that policy has not changed. Welcome back, America. That was Secretary of State Tony Blinken in Beijing yesterday in a subsequent interview with NBC News. He said the chapter on the Chinese spy balloon, quote, should be closed. It was nothing but rank appeasement. And I'm joined by Senator Tom Cotton. I don't know if he agrees with me, but in the morning Wall Street Journal, Senator, there's a story. Beijing plans a new training facility in Cuba, raising prospect of Chinese troops on America's doorstep. Appeasement always gets that kind of response. What did you make of Secretary Blinken in China yesterday? Well, Hugh, Secretary Blinken's trip to China to meet with Chairman Xi was a disastrous humiliation for America. Uh, you know, the last time he was scheduled to go, he had to cancel uh, because China sent that spy balloon across our country. I, I guess given the options, um, if I had to choose again for the future, I'd sooner have another spy balloon floating across our country than uh, Tony, uh, Tony Blinken going to China and humiliating America, uh, making us look like we're weak and groveling supplicants to Chairman Xi and Chinese communists. Hugh, just, just take the visuals of that meeting. You had Xi Jinping sitting at this giant boardroom-like table at the head of the table, and Tony Blinken sitting off to the side like some supplicant, some lackey uh, of the boss. Now, some people may say, oh, that's silly, that doesn't matter, but contrast it to what happened with Mike Pompeo and Rex Tillerson. They sat in chairs next to each other. Or Hugh, just for that matter, contrast it to what happened to Bill Gates just a few days ago. He too sat next to Xi Jinping in the chair, speaking as peers. And the fact that that Tony Blinken, and for that matter, all of his counterparts in the Biden administration had been begging and pleading for these meetings for months and finally did it and goes over there and goes out of his way to talk uh, about how the Chinese balloon incident should be closed and uh, going further than necessary on Taiwan at the time when China is uh, currently trying to build even more bases in Cuba goes just shows just how far Joe Biden will go to appease the Chinese communists, which will only beget more aggression. Senator, how can the balloon incident be closed? I, 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 we don't even have the balloon. <laughs> uh, well, it's closed in, in Joe Biden's mind because they'll do anything to avoid conflict or tension with China. When Remember, it's the communists in China that are provoking the tensions. And they're doing so because they know that given a few weeks, Joe Biden will declare any kind of conflict close. Remember, this meeting this week was not just a one-off. Now it's designed to open up uh, trips by the Secretary of Treasury and the Secretary of Commerce and even John Kerry, of all people, to go talk about climate change. I, I mean, this is an administration that would give away the farm when it comes to the military balance of power and China's neo-mercantilist policies are stealing American jobs if they can get ephemeral promises to John Kerry for climate change. Now, I didn't hear everything Secretary of State Blinken said. Did he mention the Uyghur concentration camps? Because there is a genocide rec uh, recognized by Secretary of State Pompeo, confirmed by Secretary of State Blinken. It is impossible for me to believe he didn't mention the Uyghurs, but I did not see any reference to it. He, he claims to have mentioned it in their private meeting. Let's just say that I have my doubts about how strong Tony Blinken was privately with Chairman Xi when he was looked like he was seated at the kids' table on raising not just the genocide against religious and ethnic minorities in China, uh, but their flouting of their own international commitments in Hong Kong, their aggressive probing of Taiwan's air and waters, their uh, theft of American intellectual property, flooding America with the precursors to fentanyl, if not fentanyl itself, and now potentially opening up military bases in Cuba. So I'll just uh, say that I don't have the highest degree of confidence that Tony Blinken was rough and stern with Chairman Xi in private. Is it a Munich moment? Um, if it's not a Munich moment, it's one of the moments earlier in the lead up to World War II in the 1920s and 1930s when the West could have stopped uh, a revanchist Germany, both before and after Hitler and the National Socialist Party came to power. Um, that's been happening from the very beginning with this administration, though. They have been conciliating and appeasing Xi Jinping and Chinese communists from the beginning. I, I just don't think they can understand the mindset uh, of Xi Jinping, an aggressive nationalist dictator who doesn't want to have cooperative 
competition with America. He wants to displace America as the world power and will do so militarily if necessary. Now, Senator, I don't know that a lot of our audience understands what a military base in China means. Uh, China has hypersonics. They can move them there fairly quickly. They can put troops there. What does that cause you to work? You wrote Only the Strong, the book about how we need to rebuild America's military posture. What do we need to do at Gitmo besides house Khalid Sheikh Mohammed for the rest of his mortal days? What do we need to do there in response to this? Well, Hugh, first, let's take back and just look at the geopolitical realities. Um, Cuba, for as long as America has been a political uh, community, ha- has been of grave concern to our leaders because it is only 90 miles from Florida, because it controls the sea routes of access into the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Basin. And in the modern age, it, it is an unsinkable aircraft carrier just off of our coast. Um, that is why Soviet Russia wanted to militarize Cuba. And and it did successfully after John F. Kennedy was humiliated in the Cuban Missile Crisis um, because it is far from the periphery of what would be the main effort in any conflict, first between Soviet Russia and NATO in Western Europe, and now between communist China and America and Taiwan. But if Cuba is militarized with Chinese communist rockets and missiles and aircraft and submarines, then... uh, America would have to focus there far first, again, far away from the main theater of conflict. That is the very essence of strategy, Hugh, to tie down your adversary on a peripheral conflict that you can afford to lose and prevent him from engaging on the main conflict. That is why it, it was so dangerous at, uh, after the Cuban Missile Crisis that Kennedy and the Democrats essentially allowed Cuba to be militarized. And it's so dangerous now that Joe Biden is apparently willing to look the other way for uh, China to set up a military base. And, and again, this goes far beyond just an eavesdropping station. You, As you say, they could position hypersonic missiles in Cuba. They could position other kind of long-range and intermediate-range missiles, submarine bases to extend patrols for their submarines. All these things would gravely alter the balance of power. That's why no American leader should countenance them. Yeah, when, when we think about not, oh, they're going to start with a few troops. We're going to end up with their one or two Chinese aircraft carriers making port calls there. We're going to end up with their submarines there. We're going to end up with hypersonics and long-range bombers there if we don't stop it. Now, stopping it is going to be very complicated because of the Obama administration abandonment of the embargo. I don't want people to forget that President Obama went down there for a baseball game and that Ben Rhodes, the Metternich of MSNBC, went there for Fidel Castro's funeral. This was the huge mistake because they thought, If you just throw yourself at the feet of dictators, they'll change. Didn't work in Iran, didn't work in Cuba, and now it's not working with China, and they're all getting together. The band's getting back together, Senator Cotton. Yeah, Hugh, as I I wrote in Only the Strong, in some ways, Barack Obama's Cuba deal is worse than his Iran deal. It just wasn't as grave a threat. With Cuba, Barack Obama basically said, I'm tired of this nonsense. I'm going to throw in the towel on 50 years of bipartisan policy towards Cuba. Um, you know Barack Obama probably had a Che Guevara poster in his uh, dorm room. College dorm college. room, yep. Um, but now it is. it does show just how gravely dangerous it can be when you have communist China potentially setting up a military base, not, a, not just an eavesdropping station, but a military base that could threaten all of the American homeland in, in a way that is much harder for them to do from their military bases in the Western Pacific or from their Navy in the Western Pacific. Are, are, aren't yeah, we it, to mirror whatever they do there in Taiwan? I mean, we, we already have quite a significant military presence in Japan. We can militarize Taiwan and we can ask the Vietnamese to allow us to build up their harbor facilities as well at the old ports that well, uh, used to serve the American military well, there. Had, before, what do you think? Ra- rather, than, rather than mirroring in Taiwan what they might do in Cuba, Joe Biden sh- should be uh, working to make sure they don't do any of these things in, in Cuba, because again, it would so gravely offset the balance of power. You mentioned our bases in places like Korea and Japan and Guam. I just want to remind all your listeners, those bases and our troop presence in the Western Pacific are not the cause of communist aggression. They are the result of communist aggression. We have those bases there because uh, of Soviet Russia and communist China and the threat they posed to our interests and allies in the Western Pacific. They've been there for decades. They're, they're not the reason why China is behaving the way it is now. It's because Xi Jinping thinks that he can still march on Joe Biden. Last question, Senator. 
What do we do about this Cuba thing? I mean, how do we deter that? Joe Biden, God save the queen, Joe Biden, is not going to have a policy of strength like Ronald Reagan. What do you do in the Senate in the interim until we get a new president who is serious about national security? Well, Hugh, it's incumbent that Joe Biden make it clear that America cannot tolerate communist China militarizing Cuba. Again, this is why the Cuban Missile Crisis was a strategic calamity for the United States. Uh, the Russians gave up something they had never had, which was the possibility of having nuclear armed missiles there. And in return, they got assurances that America would never again try to overthrow Castro and that we would accept any weapons up to nuclear weapons. We cannot allow that situation to happen with China because, again, it would be the essence of strategic uh, advantage for China to tie us down in Cuba, peripheral to the main conflict in Taiwan. So it has to be a high, high priority of Joe Biden to ensure that, that cannot happen. I'm confident there would be a large bipartisan majority in Congress to um, support him on that. Uh, thank you, Senator Cotton. It's always a pleasure. Have a good, good week and, and get out there on the Senate floor and start calling attention. to This, this is a disaster. It's actually just a complete disaster. Thank you, Senator.